Three Young Pilgrims by Cheryl Harness To the Pilgrims A note from the author. The purpose of this book is to tell part of the story of a family, the Allerton's adventures during one year between the autumns of 1620 and 1621 cannot be told apart from the larger story of a group of brave people who set out to make a new life in a land that was unknown to them. The book is not meant to be a scholarly work on the pilgrims. Much has been written in greater detail about their ways and wanderings. It is, instead, a storybook an illustrated primer that will perhaps lead the reader to study further. While researching this story, I visited Plymouth Plantation in Plymouth, Massachusetts. This living history museum strives to give an authentic simulation of how life was lived in the 1620s. It's a trip I would recommend to anyone who wants to discover more. Mary, Remember, and Bartholomew stood on the deck of a little boat in the very middle of dark blue ocean all around. They watched for mermaids and whales, pirates, and most of all, land. Down below their feet were the dark, bad-smelling rooms for the people in their bundles. Below them was the hold full of cargo and barrels of food and water. Below all this was dark, cold seawater where mama said fish swam through the bones of poor drowned sailors. It had been 60 days since the ship sailed from England. Finally, one cold November morning, there was a shouting, Land! Land ho! Tis America! The pilgrims strained to see a pale ribbon of land. Every morning the thin line on the horizon was thicker. Mary wondered if bears were watching from behind the tiny trees. Captain Jones told the sailors to drop the Mayflower's iron anchor into the sea. Papa said, tomorrow we will row ashore to see if all is safe. We'll find the best place for our colony and our new baby will be born in the new world. Mama blushed happily. To make sure everyone would stick together once they reached the shore, the pilgrims rowed in agreement. They were there to build a colony for the glory of God and in honor of our king and country. Together they would be a civil body politic, making and obeying laws for the common good. It was scary getting into the little boat. Everyone's legs were wobbly after so many weeks at sea. But then how wonderful to run on the solid land. Mama and the other women washed their family's clothes in the water and spread them out to dry on the rocks and bushes. The children went exploring. Don't go off too far, the mothers called. Mary thought she saw a face peeking from behind a rock, but when she looked there was no one there. That afternoon the pilgrims returned to the Mayflower. It would be their shelter until the place to settle was found. It was an important decision. That afternoon, the pilgrims returned to the Mayflower. It would be their shelter until the place to settle was found. It was an important decision. Finally, just before Christmas, Papa said to Mama, We found a fine place to build. We will call it Plymouth Colony. Mama smiled. I'm glad, Isaac. The children saw that her face was thin and pale. They felt worried. Everyone was hungry and tired of living crowded together on the damp, smelly ship. On the land and on the gray, rolling sea, the days and nights were growing cold and bitter. Mary watched snowflakes melt into the salty sea. She could hear the ringing of axes and pounding of hammers. The sounds carried clearly across the water from the land where Papa and the others were building shelter as fast as they could. The grown-ups were beginning to be sick. Mistress Mullins had died of the sickness. Mr. Bradford's sad, silent wife had fallen into the sea and drowned. Mary shivered and wished that the new baby would come, that spring would come, and that they could all be warm and safe together in their own house with supper in the kettle. In the next weeks, those who were strong enough moved their belongings from the ship to the common house and to their own half-built houses. 
winter evening, Papa built a smoky fire in their own hearth. That night, Bartholomew, Remember, and Mary warmed their fingers with their whispered prayers and bundled up with him and Mama. The family listened long to the sounds of the woods before falling asleep, and the wind blew cold off the sea. On the 16th day of March, Mary found tiny spring flowers in a clump of melting snow. Remember said, It must be spring. Mama said, Winter is most dark and cold just before spring. In the darkest winter, half of the pilgrims had died of the great sickness. Mama and the new baby died too. A tear slipped down Bartholomew's nose. Then he saw the Indian. He stood quietly at the edge of the woods and looked at them with keen, dark eyes. His skin was the color of copper. The children turned and ran to find Papa. They found him trying to break up the rocky soil of their garden. Papa, come with us. Not now, he began in a weary voice. They pulled his hands. There's an Indian. They saw the tall man walk up to Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Bradford. Welcome, Englishman, he said in a loud, deep voice. My name is Samoset. The thin, sad pilgrims came out of their fields and doorways to see the Indian. After spending the night with the Hopkins family, Samoset went back to his home in the forest. When he came back, he brought his friend Squanto with him. They brought food and later showed the settlers how to plant corn a new way. In each hill of corn, they buried small fish. Remember planted the herbs and flowers Mama had brought. When no one was looking, Mary planted a fish too. On a pearly April morning, Captain Jones sailed away on the Mayflower back to the Old World. Many of the pilgrims wiped away homesick tears. When the ship was a glint on the horizon, they walked back to their work. This was home now. All down the warm, green summer days, everyone tended their gardens and crops in the fields. The corn stood taller than Mary could reach. When Priscilla Mullins and John Alden were married, Remember brought primroses from Mama's garden. That fish must have helped, Mary smiled to herself. There was going to be a rich harvest. Well into the cool blue evenings, the pilgrims worked gathering in the squash, peas, beans, barley, and corn. Herbs for medicines and seasonings were tied into sweet-smelling bunches. After the Sabbath prayers and hymn singing, Governor Bradford stood before the congregation. His collar was very white beneath his sunburned face. We will invite our Indian brothers to feast with us and offer prayers of thanksgiving to the Maker for a bountiful harvest. It would be a fine thing to do. Nobody had forgotten how it felt to be cold and hungry. Massasoit, the great leader, Samoset, Squanto, and nearly 90 other men emerged from the shadowy woods, wearing feathers in their black hair. The feasting went on for three days, as the deer brought by the Indians roasted and food was set out on long tables, the men challenged each other to see who was strongest, whose feet ran fastest. Late at night, Papa and his children sat at the edge of the circle of firelight. There was singing, and far off they could see the harvest moon rising out of the ocean. The moon path of light might have led all the way back to the old homes in Holland and England. Mary sat in Papa's lap, munching a bit of berry tart. Bartholomew asked, Papa, are you happy we came to America? Remember frowned at her brother. She didn't want Papa to be sad. Mary looked up into Papa's dark eyes. After a time, he said, Your mother and I wanted to bring up our children where no king could tell us how to live and pray. He sighed. We didn't know it would be so hard. But yes, I am happy. And what of you children? We've had a devilish hard time, and we've had to be brave. But are you happy? Papa's voice was very soft. Bartholomew watched the fire and the men who had begun to dance and said, I think I will be, Papa. Remember, squeezed Papa's rough fingers and smiled up at him. Mary wished that Mama were there. Papa's arms tightened around her. 
Feeling warm and safe, she whispered, I wasn't happy. Papa's soft whiskers brushed her cheek. The four of them listened to the singing and the sea. Way past bedtime, away from the fire, the moon lighted the paths leading home. Not long after the days of feasting, a ship was sighted. The fortune brought 35 new settlers and no food to feed them. There followed a hungry winter and more hard times. The pilgrim's good friend Squanto died in September of 1622. The next summer, a miraculous rain came just in time to save the harvest, and two more ships came from England, the Anne and the Little James. Many families were reunited. Deacon Fuller's wife and Elder Brewster's daughters were aboard. Two years later, Fear Brewster became Papa's second wife. Slowly, the hungry years passed, and the colony grew as the land became prosperous. The pilgrims and their children moved to their own farms in newly created townships, such as Rehoboth and Duxbury. When Bartholomew grew up, he went back to England. Remember got married and moved to Salem. Mary became the wife of Tom Cushman, who had come over on the fortune. They had eight children, and when Mary Allerton Cushman died in 1699, the last passenger of the Mayflower passed from the earth. In the days of the pilgrims, the Church of the King was the Church of the Nation, so King James Church was the Church of England. Some folks thought that the King's Church should be stricter, pure, and plain. Some even left it all together. This was against the law. Even though they loved England, these people were in too much trouble to stay, so they went to Holland and settled in the town of Leiden. William Brewster, his wife, Mary, and young William Bradford, who later became the governor of Plymouth, were among them. After 12 years in Holland, they and other members of their little church decided to go to America, where there were lots of land and greater freedom. Because they thought of themselves as God's chosen people, they called themselves saints. The others who sailed were strangers to them, so that's what they were called. Besides religious freedom, the New World also offered the chance for people to own their own land. Because of this opportunity, the strangers, men, women, and children from London and southeastern England decided to join the adventure. Many problems later, 102 pilgrims altogether sailed away on the Mayflower. And that's the end of the story, Three Young Pilgrims.